Hello class, this is Adam Ward. I wanted to work through an example of the light bottle, dark bottle method. Uh, this is very parallel to the example that Chopra presents in the textbook. And so in class we had a slide uh, that looked something like this. Um, an experiment was conducted over a 10 hour period from 8 p.m. to, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., excuse me. Um, you're given the initial and final DO readings in both the light and dark bottles, sunrise and sunset. So you've got a photo period of 14 hours between those two. Uh, and you're given the BOD in filtered water and the decomposition rate. Um, and I've put a few specifics on here, but essentially we're going to work through all of the values that we can calculate from these data. So for the light bottle, uh, if we look at the change in oxygen content through time, that's the net photosynthesis in the bottle. That's 14.4 milligrams per liter per day by my calculation. Uh, and if we look at the dark bottle data, the straight forward calculation that we can make um, is the community respiration that took place, and I get 6 milligrams per liter. And so those are sort of the most basic measurements that you might make from your observations in the light and the dark bottles. Um, the next thing that you might want to do is isolate what happened in the bottle uh, due to the community that's living there, respiring, from the BOD, right, from the oxygen that was consumed just by decomposition. And so you can get the bottle respiration rate by subtracting um, either the filtered BOD per unit time, again, isolating respiration from BOD, um, or you can reframe this slightly uh, and so Chopra shows in the textbook that um, you can also use uh, the decomposition rate uh, times the BOD in the filtered water. And so that's the substitution I've made here, shown in red. And you can calculate an actual respiration rate of 5.8 milligrams per liter per day. Uh, so most of the respiration that we observed was due to the community. Um, only about 0.2 milligrams per liter per day was due to BOD decomposition in this example. Uh, similarly, we can calculate the total photosynthesis in the bottle. And so remembering that what we observed in the light bottle, the P net that we saw, is a combination of the total photosynthesis and then the respiration that used up that oxygen. Uh, we can simply make that correction. So bottle photosynthesis is net plus community respiration, or 20.4 milligrams per liter per day. Uh, if you're interested in actually getting at the maximum photosynthesis rate, um, this is shown in example 24.2 in Chopra. Um, the equation is not numbered here, um, but the idea is that you're setting the integral of what happens during the photo period uh, equal to what happened during your test. Um, and so this is a fairly long equation. Um, on the top, you've got bottle photosynthesis. Uh, T2 minus T1, that's representing the ending and starting times of your bottle test, respectively, and then pi. On the bottom, you've got F, uh, which is your photo period. Um, you've got your time to peak, TP. Uh, and then you've got a couple terms that have cosines, photo periods, TPs, and pi's, and um, differences between T1 and TR, and T2 and TR. And again, I'd encourage you to check out e example 24.2 in the textbook where this equation is derived. Uh, but if you plug in the values from our example, um, we find a peak photosynthesis rate uh, that we expect about 26.1 milligrams per liter per day. Uh, and similarly, if you want to distill that into the daily average, um, they're related by the equation here. Daily average is the peak times 2 times the photo period divided by pi. And so you get a 24-hour average photosynthesis of 9.7 milligrams per liter per day. Uh, so we've moved through these sort of quickly, uh, but I wanted to talk you through an example that is very parallel to what Chopra presents in example 24.2. Uh, I hope this is helpful for you. Thanks.